The first pictures from the recently launched Herschel Space Telescope have just been released. Astronomers say they're among the most important for decades. Launched in May 2009, aboard an Ariane 5 rocket, alongside the Planck Space Telescope, Herschel detached from Planck and separately made its journey through space, ready for its three-year expected lifetime, never to return to the Earth. Its final destination to be the second Lagrange point, a point of stability situated 1.5 million kilometres from Earth. The mission is only expected to last three years, as after this time the 2,000 litres of liquid helium stored on Herschel to cool the instruments and maintain the detector's sensitivity will finally have boiled away. Weighing 3.4 tonnes and standing at 7.5 metres high, it is comparable to the size of a double-decker bus. Its stature is essential to complete the job at hand. It contains on board the three main instruments and the large mirror vital to its scientific research. The three main scientific instruments are Hi-Fi, PAX and Spire. Hi-Fi has been designed and created to receive the fingerprints that show scientists important information about the chemical constituents of objects in space. In the same way that DNA can identify a person, an object's spectra can show what elements it is made up of. PAX observes the slightly less cold material in which we have been previously talking about. It may be slightly warmer, but it is still hundreds of degrees below zero. This may be because it has been heated up by objects close to it, for example, stars. The Spire camera uses light which is 500 to 1000 times longer than the wavelength of visible light. It receives this exceptionally long wavelength light from clouds of dust in regions where stars are forming, in our own and other galaxies, which would be invisible to other telescopes such as Hubble. The mirror on Herschel is the largest ever built for an infrared space telescope at 3.5 metres. This is double the size of the mirror on the Hubble Space Telescope, which means that the detail becomes extremely rich. The mirror is a Cassegrain type. The Cassegrain reflector is a combination of a primary concave mirror and a secondary convex mirror. The reason for the need for a large diameter on the primary mirror is that the larger the mirror, the more light that can be collected and the sharper that the images will be. The mirror will collect long wavelength radiation from some of the coldest and most distant parts of the universe. It is necessary to observe in the infrared to view these parts of the universe as they do not radiate in the visible wavelength range or at shorter wavelengths. Study of these cooler objects is only possible by observing in spectral range viewed by Herschel, the submillimeter to the far infrared 55 to 672 micrometres. Many objects are brightest at these wavelengths and the images show a much clearer and more complete view. Another advantage is viewing in this light enables us to look through the dust and gas in space which would conceal objects of interest as it would block visible light completely. Infrared radiation is not affected by these clouds as the longer the wavelengths the thicker the dust cloud that it can penetrate. Observing the infrared is the reason for the necessity of this telescope to be operational in space, as it is freed from the restrictions imposed by Earth's atmosphere. The water vapour in the Earth's atmosphere absorbs radiation across large parts of the infrared and submillimeter wave bands, making ground-based observations at these wavelengths impossible. By orbiting at L2, some 1.5 million kilometres from Earth, Herschel is not troubled by any atmospheric absorption. Observing in the infrared is a new and exciting branch of science and has recently unveiled tens of thousands of new galaxies. It has also been the reason for many surprising discoveries. One of the main discoveries made from the Herschel mission is involving the comet Hartley 2. In the beginning, our planet would have been dry, 
So the age-old question is, where did the water come from? With the help of the Herschel Space Observatory, we may finally be able to answer that exact question. Using the equipment on board the telescope, we are able to conduct what can be thought of as a fingerprint match between water in space and water in our own oceans. Water on Earth is not the only type of water. Each type of water is made up of different ratios of particles. In this case, different amounts of deuterium and hydrogen. Deuterium is a rare type of hydrogen which is present in the water here on Earth. The specific amount of these elements make up a unique molecular fingerprint which can be used to identify the water from our own oceans. By comparing the deuterium to hydrogen ratio found in the water in Earth's oceans with that in extraterrestrial objects, astronomers can aim to identify the origin of our water. Scientists looked in the direction of Comet Hartley 2 using Herschel's Hi-Fi, the most sensitive instrument so far for detecting water in space. It can tell between different water types using sensitive measurements of the light that they emit. From this, they found a similar ratio to that of Earth. The discovery revives the idea that our planet's seas could once have been giant icebergs floating through space. Comet Hartley 2 contains water more like that found on Earth than all the comets that we have so far studied. This result hints at the idea that much of Earth's water could have initially come from cometary impacts. Originally, it was thought that water may have come from Oort cloud objects formed early in the solar system's history in a region near to Jupiter and Saturn before being propelled out by the gravity of the giant planets. After being thrown out to large distances, they bumped into planets and each other before returning many years later. The possible reason for why Comet Hartley 2 is different to others previously examined could be because of where it was born. Far beyond Pluto, in a region of the solar system known as the Kuiper Belt. Comet Hartley 2 is the first Kuiper Belt object to undergo the deuterium analysis. Kuiper Belt objects form just beyond the orbit of Neptune and comets that originate there have much shorter orbits than those from the Oort cloud. The new observations suggest that maybe Earth's oceans did in fact come from comets, but only a specific group of them. These comets were born in the outer solar system in the Kuiper Belt region. In this area, the deuterium to hydrogen ratio imprinted in the ice in comets may be different to those born in the warmer, inner solar system. Herschel is now looking at other comets to reinforce this idea. As well as where water comes from, Herschel will tell us many more interesting and exciting things about the invisible universe.